3x minus 1 to the power of 7. Uh, when we get to it, you can help us out. We've got 3x minus 1 to the power of 8 divided by 24, and then our plus c. Hands up for agreement. Okay, quite a few hands. Fantastic. Thank you. Hands down. Remember, there's a bunch of things that all happen simultaneously here. Yeah. This index has gone up. You can see the 7 became an 8. And then this 24, which two parts of the integral did it come from? The 24? Yeah, Max. The inside of the brackets and then the 8. Because you have to divide by 8 and then divide by the derivative. Excellent. So we've divided by the new index, which is 8. We've also divided by the derivative of the inside function. Because what do we call this? It's got a name when we do this kind of integral. It's reverse chain rule. Very good. So just like we do normal chain rule, inside derivative, you divide by both of them, sums up. And you, of course, could check that by differentiation, as you could with all of them. Part B. Uh, we've got e to the x, which integrates up into e to the x. E to the x thumbs up. Um, you've got that plus 1, which integrates up into x, and then a constant of integration. Looking good. All right, now part C is a bit sneakier, because you've got to decide what to do with that half out the front, and then your index of 2x. So we've got here a quarter e to the 2x plus c. Agreement? A few, but not heaps. OK, hands down. A few, but yeah, less than a third of the class. Let's, uh, let's double check this, right? Again, I commend all of you, particularly in these early stages. You've got to get good at differentiation still, so you might as well kind of come back to this and check your answer, right? If I were to differentiate what we think is the integral, okay? Hopefully, I'll land back on the question, on that integrand, okay? Let's have a look. I'm differentiating. What rule do I use with this guy? I use chain rule, right? There's an inside function there. Its derivative in this case is 2. It's 2, right? So I'll put that 2 out the front. Everything else just kind of follows because having dealt with the inside, what is the outside function? What kind of function is it? It's an e to the power of something. We already know that e to the power of something, it differentiates back into itself. So this a quarter e to the 2x gives you back a quarter e to the 2x. What happens to the constant of integration? It's gone. It's gone. Differentiated. It's constant. Have a look at this. Does this land us back where we wanted? Yeah. It does. Thumbs up. So this is correct. OK, just to close us off, and this sort of, um, this kind of shows my hand for what we're going to today. The derivative of cos x, is it negative sine x? No. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's the opposite. So instead of negative, it'll be a positive. Hmm. No, it's negative. Is this the derivative? Let's think back, because this is, um, this is not quite so easy to see. Think about this, right? Shh. You're 12? Let me ask you this question again. When we started differentiation, we did first principles, all that kind of stuff. These derivatives here and the one we're about to get, what do they tell you about a function? When you differentiate, what does that answer tell you about the function? The gradient. Thank you. Tells, and that's why we call it, in fact, as well as the derivative, we call it the gradient function. So think about what cos x actually looks like. That's cos x. Roughly? Yep, just part of it anyway. Okay. What does the derivative look like? Well, you know there's a few spots where the derivative will be zero, right? Which spots? The stationary points. Yep, the stationary points, right? Where are those stationary points? At zero, thank you. There's one. Where's the other one? At, the, at this dip down here, and then there's one more. Right at the end there. Yeah, you okay with that? Right. Now, between this stationary point and this stationary point, is the function increasing or decreasing? decreasing. It's decreasing, right? It starts up here and goes woo, down like on a slide, right? So therefore, the derivative in this section should be negative, right? So it drops down like that. When we cross this next stationary point, this part of the graph, is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. It's increasing, so that's why you get this part. What does this red graph look like? It looks like negative sine x to me. Okay, so that's great, fantastic. And then lastly, so if you said you knew the derivative of tan two x, can you help us out? Is it two sec x? No, two x sec squared x. What goes in here? Two x. What we started with? Done. So the two that Sophie identified, where'd that come from? 
Have a look. Have a look at the question. It tells you to differentiate, right? Uh, inside derivative is 2, and then the outside is tan. Tan turns correctly into sec squared perfect. Okay.